Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about why I use full synthetic oil in all my vehicles. So vehicle number one is my 2018 F-150 with 3.5 EcoBoost. And the reason I use full synthetic is because it's turbocharged, twin turbocharged engine, V6, best in class torque, makes a ton of torque for its displacement and a whole lot of horsepower, 375 horsepower. And it's only 3.5 liter V6. I would imagine there's a lot of pressure on the crankshaft. Also, it has variable valve, dual variable valve timing, and all that stuff's oil controlled, small passages, and the last thing you want is any sludge or anything to form. And also the turbochargers. When you're towing with this truck, you can kind of hear the turbochargers. Turbochargers working a lot harder under towing and under load. So, you know, I you know for normal driving maybe a blend is okay but for the way i use it driving hard hard pulls all the time towing uh full synthetic is the way to go uh manufacturer recommends synthetic blend but full synthetic is an option and that's what i run it's actually pretty controversial a lot of people don't run full synthetic and say just to stick with this with the blend because it's the minimum that the manufacturer recommends but nowadays all manufacturers allow for synthetic oil and that's what i'm running uh, I tend to run the Motorcraft full synthetic just because it's easier to get my hands on it. I can go to the dealership and get an oil change and it seems to run pretty good. Ford, the Ford uh, filters are pretty good. The Ford oil filters are really good, highly rated filters. So uh, just the convenience of going to the dealership and getting everything done there is why I run Motorcraft full synthetic oil in my F-150. Next up, my wife's 2019 F-150. Right now, it's got synthetic blend in it, most likely from the factory, because it's only got 2,000 miles on it. And I'm probably gonna change the oil a little bit early in it, because the actual mileage never really gets reached before the time. And I'm gonna switch to full synthetic, probably Motorcraft, because it is turbocharged as well. And when I drive this truck, I drive pretty hard. The wife doesn't drive too hard but she does drive a little bit quick but mainly full synthetic oil is rated for a lot longer service interval than synthetic blend synthetic blend has conventional oil mixed in and every six months or so you want to change that oil with full synthetic i can go off the miles you know i can change it once a year going off just the miles and i'll be okay so that's why i run full synthetic also turbocharged i do occasionally tow with her truck and you know it just makes sense to do full synthetic you can hear the turbos working harder when you're towing they're under a lot of heat because they're powered by the exhaust so full synthetic for her truck as well all right 2019 super duty this is our workhorse it tows 90 percent of its life very rarely i'll drive this truck just to go somewhere but for the most part it's used for towing a lawn mowing trailer and snow plowing well, the thing about lawn mowing is you have to have your density, your route density set up to where you don't drive a whole ton of miles. So within a year, this truck might be lucky to get maybe 5,000 miles in a whole year. So generally, generally, the mileage does not come up on an annual basis for this truck. So if I were to run a synthetic blend, which is the minimum requirement, I'd be looking at changing oil just based off of the six months or whatever it is for the that they recommend because it's got conventional mixed in i'm not a big fan of running uh with the mileage intervals and time intervals that you get with synthetic blend whereas going full synthetic on this truck because it's towing all the time because i'm probably gonna be potentially owning this truck for a long time I like to run full synthetic. It's got a timing chain. All these trucks have timing chains. And Ford, even though they only recommend synthetic blend for these vehicles, these timing chains, they do have wear issues. Uh, and I'm sure they've corrected a lot of those issues from the past. But the last thing I want is a guide, a chain guide problem. If I decide to keep this truck after it's paid off, the last thing I want to do is deal with the timing chain issue and a, or a cam phaser issue or anything like that. So full synthetic for this just because it doesn't get the miles and all these chain driven engines the top ends are are a little bit fragile so you don't want to do anything you want it well you in my opinion in my opinion you should do everything that you can to protect the top end the valve trains on these motors 
Uh, so yeah, full synthetic. It doesn't get a, enough miles. So I, I feel comfortable running full synthetic. If I change the oil once a year, it is all it is all good. So far we've changed the oil one time just to, after about 2,000 miles to get the synthetic in it. And now it's at about 6,000 miles and I've had it for a year. So that puts into perspective how many miles it gets. Doesn't get enough for the, uh, it doesn't get enough to get enough oil changes to run conventional oil. Gets Motorcraft full synthetic because it's available at the dealer. Motorcraft filter, which are great filters. So, so far so good, still runs good. And we also use, use it for snow plowing and that's brutal. You know, starting up your truck after it sat for a few days and the oil flow needs to be there for those cold startups and then we run all day. We might run the engine all day, but not put a lot of miles, but a lot of hours. So full synthetic all the way for the Super Duty. Next up, lawn mowers. Lawn mowers see full synthetic oil. Well, interesting story with this push mower. This is a homeowner's push mower. And when I bought it, you know, I sold off the commercial push mower with the big Kawasaki engine and all the fancy stuff because it was so heavy that it was annoying to to push and no one wanted to push the push mower. Whereas the homeowner's push mower is just a lot lighter and easier to maneuver. But anyway, we put the oil in this engine from the from the factory, from the whatever Toro, Tr Briggs and Stratton, whatever, and we ran it probably over its interval, and the mower started smoking. It started burning so much oil past the rings and smoking, and I took it home. I was I realized. I mean, I knew what the problem was. We went over the oil change, and we put Mobile One full synthetic oil in it. And I think it hasn't been changed since. And this oil does not burn any oil. <clears throat> All the oil, oil burning stopped. And I mean burned oil. I mean it shot plumes of smoke. It was shooting plumes of smoke out of the exhaust. It was so bad. And we put Mobile One in it. And it runs perfect. Pull, starts on the first pull. And it doesn't uh, burn any oil. And we've been running it hard since like last year. When we got this. Uh... And it's just a cheap, 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 cheap mower. I think it got banged up against this valve cover here. It's, it looks kind of dented, but it still runs. Uh, this mower, first commercial mower I ever bought, Kawasaki, 14, 15 horse Kawasaki, uh, doesn't get a whole lot of hours because it's a smaller 36 inch mower. And the engine still runs good. It's got about 500 hours on it, but same deal. I might change the oil on, it, on this once a year just because of the fact that it doesn't get that many hours every year. It's a smaller mower. The bigger mower does most of the actual work. And the last thing you need is some, uh, some, some oil that oxidizes just because it's sitting in the engine and not getting that many hours because it's kind of a specialty mower. It doesn't get that many, that many hours. <clears throat> On the other hand, this is my second commercial mower that I ever bought. And it's already got double the hours that the first mower that I had even longer it's got double the hours and it's at about a thousand hours and gets full synthetic oil. It's had mobile one its whole life, still fires up on the first, uh, when we first turn the key and we're actually trying AMS oil out. I don't know if I like it better than mobile one or not. It seems okay, but you know, I still kind of like the mobile one. I might go back cause just cause it's more available and can get it. I don't know. It seems easier to get. But we run just the Kawasaki oil filters, Mobile One, and these mowers, like I say, I might go over the change interval a little bit. If I'm busy or whatever, I'll kind of, I kind of write down my change intervals on the wall. Uh, I'll show you that. But sometimes I go over. And if I do, then, you know, at least I got a little bit of extra insurance. If I go, you know, 10 or 15 hours, maybe 20 hours over, at least I'm running the best oil that I can get my hands on. And... <clears throat> I'll be, uh, I'll still be okay. The oil, even though I, even though I'm still kind of sort of changing it close to the recommended interval by the manufacturer, the stuff comes out, it probably could still go a little longer, you know, because I don't think they're considering that it's full synthetic. But to me, it's cheap insurance because I want to get the most out of the engine, and I'm pretty sure the engine is going to outlast the rest of the machine. So, you know, we've had no engine problems. We had some other issues, you know, with some electrical stuff, but, you know. The engines are solid, and I think it's because of the oil that we run. All right, so looking at the oil change intervals, it looks like we changed the oil at 8.07, 8 
and then 850 and then 930 so we went way over our oil change for the next one and actually forgot to write the date down because we're over a thousand twenty five so I, and I just changed the oil so we went 